Athena Strand was born on May 25, 2015, in the small American town of Duncan, Oklahoma. Soon her parents divorced and the girl's father moved to Texas, and Athena stayed with her mother, while the father constantly kept in touch with his daughter and came to her whenever possible. Sometimes mom also brought Athena to see him. Despite the divorce, they got along great, and the woman wanted her daughter to spend enough time with dad. Later, Athena's mother remarried, and her father got married. The girl had two younger sisters with whom she was very close and tried to spend as much time with them as possible. Athena was an ordinary happy child, always pleased others with her positive attitude, loved to play and spend as much time as possible outside. At the end of 2022, when she was seven, she temporarily moved in with her father in Texas. The girl was supposed to live with him until the New Year holidays, after which she returned to her mother in Oklahoma, during which time Athena studied at a local elementary school. The house in which her father lived was located in the remote countryside, surrounded by forests and fields. The girl enjoyed spending time in nature with her dad, and she also got along well with his new wife, Elizabeth. On November 30th, the girl, as usual, returned from school by bus at about 4.15 in the afternoon. Her father and grandfather were hunting at that time and Athena was at home with Elizabeth. That evening, the girl was not in the mood, because of which she began to argue with the woman. As a result, Athena was offended and went to her room, and Elizabeth went to the kitchen to cook her dinner. After about 20 minutes, she went to the girl's room to call her for dinner, but Athena was not there. Elizabeth went around the house in search of her and also looked out into the yard, but the girl was nowhere to be found. After that, the woman called her husband's relatives, who lived only a few hundred meters away. Sometimes Athena went to visit them, but they said that they did not see her. Then Elizabeth called her husband and told her about what had happened. He told her to immediately contact the police and immediately headed towards the house. The woman called 911 at about 6.40 and the officers arrived at her house 14 minutes later. Elizabeth explained the situation to them and also shared her version of what happened. In her opinion, Athena could run away from home because of the quarrel that arose between them. However, the girl's relatives strongly doubted this. Firstly, Athena was only seven and she had never gone far from home before. And secondly, it was already evening outside, and the girl was afraid of the dark. At first, the police reacted to Elizabeth with suspicion, mainly due to the fact that the woman went to the police only 40 minutes after discovering the disappearance of the child. But after listening to her story about how she was looking for a girl around the house and calling up relatives, they came to the conclusion that she was most likely telling the truth. The officers immediately began to search the area, Despite the fact that it was already dark outside, they went to comb the forests and fields within a radius of several kilometers from the house. According to their main version, Athena could leave the house and get lost in the dark, so the police threw all their forces to cover this area. They also considered a possible kidnapping, but they could not find a single clue in this direction. There were no traces of a break-in in the house. Elizabeth did not hear any noise or screams, and none of the neighbors saw anything suspicious that evening. In the search, the police were helped by the girl's relatives, as well as other caring residents of the city. Athena's mother went there as soon as she found out about her daughter's disappearance. The search continued until almost 5 a.m., but they did not manage to find any trace of Athena. The situation was complicated by the fact that the area around the house was quite difficult to access, especially in the dark. As early as 7 a.m., the police resumed the search, involving even more officers. In addition, when the news of the girl's disappearance spread throughout the district, hundreds of volunteers joined the search. Some of them inspected the area on their horses and ATVs, and the police used drones and helicopters with thermal imagers. Unfortunately, for the whole day they also failed to find Athena. The police feared for her life, since it was already the beginning of winter, Despite the fact that Texas is a southern state, the temperature these days dropped to 10 degrees Celsius. Given that the girl was wearing light clothes, it would be very difficult for her to endure such weather. On the third day, the search continued, and the police expanded their area to 10 kilometers around the house. They also connected their colleagues to the case, 
who were looking for a possible criminal component in this case. Despite the fact that initially there was no evidence of the abduction, the police increasingly doubted that Athena left home of her own free will. During these days, they combed several kilometers in all directions, and they did not manage to find the girl, that she could walk such a distance on her own without stumbling upon any settlement, it seemed very doubtful. Investigators tried to identify everyone who was near Athena's house that evening. This task was very difficult, since the housing was surrounded by trees, as well as several dozen meters from the main road. In addition, there was not a single surveillance camera in the area, however. They quickly managed to get the first clue. It turned out that the same evening the courier service delivered the parcel to the girl's house, the investigators immediately contacted FedEx, where they were told that the delivery to that address was handled by a third-party contractor. They contacted the organization that was engaged in the delivery of parcels, and they established which van arrived at Athena's house that evening. Fortunately for the police, each such car was equipped with a surveillance camera, and they immediately requested a video for November 30th. Rewinding by the time the van drove up to the house, investigators saw very disturbing footage. They showed how the driver dragged a girl who looked like Athena into the car. They immediately learned from the company the identity of the driver. It turned out to be 31-year-old Tanner Horner, and the police went to his address. Soon the man was arrested on suspicion of kidnapping, and he was taken for questioning as soon as investigators said that they had video footage from the camera. Horner began to speak. He said that he had actually delivered the package to Athena's house that evening. As the man was backing up in his van, he felt the impact and went out to see what it was. The Horner saw the girl on the ground and realized that he had accidentally hit her with his car. Coming closer, the man noticed that she had not received any serious injuries. The girl was conscious, did not cry, and even spoke to him. According to Horner, she said that she would tell her father about the incident, and the man panicked, after which he took the girl into the van, thinking about how to solve this problem. She continued to talk to him and said her name was Athena Corner. I didn't know what to do with this whole situation. He understood that if the girl told about this incident to adults, he could face problems with the law, and then he told the investigators what, to put it mildly, caused them bewilderment. According to Horner, he did not come up with anything better than to kill her. The man said that at first he tried to break her neck, but he did not succeed. Then he strangled the victim. He took her body to a river near a nearby town and threw it into the water. Of course, this version of events raised big questions among the police, but the suspect showed them the exact place where he left Athena. Investigators immediately went there and actually found her body there. The news of the girl's murder shocked not only her relatives, but also thousands of people across the country. By that time, all the leading media were talking about this case and people were shocked by such cruelty. After the discovery of Horner's body was charged with kidnapping and murder pending a report from medical experts, detectives began to examine the identity of the perpetrator under a microscope, trying to better understand his motives. The version of events that Horner told them seemed completely implausible. According to him, he slightly hit the girl with a van without causing her any serious injuries. However, the man was so frightened that he immediately decided to kill, given that for hitting a child without causing injury, his maximum punishment could only be dismissal. Horner's story turned out to be very strange. The police found that the man was engaged, and a year before these events he had a child. In addition to delivering parcels, he sometimes worked part-time at Uber. Horner was also engaged in music and was a member of a band that played in various cafes in the neighboring city of Fourth Social Networks. He posted a lot of photos with his child, footage from musical performances and other things that do not give the impression that Horner is a real monster. Before his arrest, he had no problems with the law, and in all his biographies the police could not find any hints that this man was a brutal killer. Just two months before Athena's death, the man posted photos of him spending time with his son and his grandparents. The wait for the report of medical experts, which was supposed to shed light on the real picture of what happened, dragged on for several weeks, while Athena's parents sued FedEx and the contractor's company, accusing them of allowing Horner to work. 
They demanded higher standards for vetting and selecting employees to avoid similar crimes in the future. One fact soon came to light that made the whole story even sadder. It turned out that the package that Horner delivered that evening was a Christmas gift for Athena. Her parents ordered a Barbie doll for her, which she had long wanted. When the opinion of medical experts became known to the public, even more questions arose in this case. According to the document, the victim died within the first hour after the abduction. Injuries of various severity were found on her body, and the cause of death was strangulation. However, the main version of the detectives was not confirmed. They believed that Horner noticed the girl near the house and decided to kidnap her in order to rape her. But medical experts did not find any traces of sexual violence. This puzzled the police, because this motive was the most obvious. None of them was sure that the events really unfolded. According to the story of the killer himself, since there was no logic in this, when investigators suggested that the perpetrator originally planned to rape the girl, but something did not go according to plan. According to detectives, after a quarrel with her dad's wife, Athena went outside and was in the yard. At the same time, Horner drove up to the house to leave the package and noticed the girl. According to the researchers, he saw this as an opportunity to realize his perverted fantasies. Athena was alone near the house, which was surrounded by trees, complete isolation from prying eyes. Horner could either trick the girl into a van or deliberately run over her to put her in a car without resistance. What happened next is unclear. There are two main versions that seem the most logical. Horner could have planned to take the girl away from home and carry out his plan there, but she either started screaming or tried to escape. Escape. Frightened of being caught, the man killed her, after which he took the body to the river. According to the second version, Horner could still commit some lewd acts on the victim that did not imply direct contact, in which case medical experts would not be able to establish the fact of sexual violence. Soon detectives had indirect and very unexpected evidence that this crime could indeed have a sexual motive. Horner had no problems with the law before this murder, which it is quite rare. In most cases, people who are able to purposefully take someone else's life start with much less serious crimes. For many weeks, detectives thoroughly studied the biography of Horner. They communicated with his relatives, friends, and acquaintances, trying to find at least some hints that the man could be related to other crimes, and ultimately, they were waiting for a breakthrough. The police managed to find several people who said that they suffered from the actions of Horner as children. The police did not disclose their identities in the interests of the investigation, as well as all the details of what happened. It is only known that one of the victims accused the man of abusing her nine years ago. In addition, Horner was charged with three more episodes related to the abuse of minors in 2013. At the moment, it is not known whether we are talking about one child or three different victims, but that's not all. It turned out that one of the victims of Horner for many years publicly spoke about the fact that the man subjected her to violence when she was 16. The girl has been writing about this on her social networks for years, trying to convey to everyone the fact that Horner is a dangerous criminal. For some reason, the man was not punished for what he had done and did not even appear as a suspect. The girl accuses him of this crime, wrote that throughout all these years, no one believed her. However, after Horner killed Athena, this accusation was given much more attention. They revealed the true nature of this man and his possible motives. Now Horner will also be judged on these four episodes, but separately from the trial. On the murder of Athena, I would like to note another point, which in itself does not seem significant. But in the context of all the crimes, Horner gives an additional idea of his true face. After his identity became known to the general public, Internet users discovered the killer's TikTok account. There were only a few videos, of which only the last one, filmed a few weeks before the murder, was of interest. In this video, Horner recorded his reaction to a video where a man caught a beetle in a glass after slowly poisoning it with a spray can. Watching the beetle die, a very creepy expression appeared on Horner's face, as if he was genuinely enjoying the murder process. If the man really was a sadist who felt genuine pleasure at the sight of someone's death, his version of the murder of Athena is once again questioned. Horner stated that the only reason he killed her was because of the fear of being punished for a much smaller crime. 
But if we assume that he had such sadistic tendencies, his story seems even more ridiculous. In preparation for the trial, the authorities announced that they would seek the death penalty. Horner himself hired a lawyer who advised him to withdraw his confession and declare his innocence, but this is unlikely to help the man escape punishment, given that the police have video footage from the van, as well as Horner's testimony about the exact location of the body. His guilt is more than obvious. In addition, after the start of the trial, additional evidence may be announced, and the availability of which is now unknown. Most likely, traces of Athena's DNA were found in the van, and the killer's genetic material could well have been collected from her clothes and body. We just have to follow the progress of the trial and wait for what other details will become known to the public. Share your opinion about this story in the comments and don't forget to like it if you liked the video. Thanks for watching.